here he did the greatest work that posterity is about to forget. What is this series called? Rekindling the Reformation. The time for silence is past. The time to speak has come. Wake up the whole world. Now is a high time to awake out of sleep. Today I'm going to show you the seat of the new world order and also the mark of the bees that they already have. All they have to do is enforcing their law. The whole thing is tied with religion. That's why Revelation chapter 13 verse 17 the Bible says no one can buy or sell. Notice. It's a great honor for me. Thank you so much. Friends, I'm going to give you a little history and then I will tell you the power behind the scene, the new world order. Constantine was the one that who unite the church and stay together. Notice during dark ages, pagan Rome, when he marched them to Tiber River, they said they was baptized. So when they came to the church, they was either statue worshippers. So when they brought their statues in Roman Catholic Church, they start naming them Christian name, Jupiter and all this thing. They call them Peter and Rosary and all this paganism that they brought to Roman Catholic Church. And some of the Christians they don't like so they protest against. That's why they call them Protestants or Protestant. So they set up their Jesuit order during 1500. The reason they said their Jesuit order is to destroy the Christians that they protest against their paganism. I'm tired of people saying Christianity is a crutch. It's not a crutch, it's a cross. This planet is covered in blood. As a consequence of people who stood for righteousness and truth. They also infiltrate the state to control the whole world. The Jesuit, they created Masons and now they got Skull and Bones, the Illuminati, all them secret societies, friends. And what is Obama and all them powers, they all belong to secret societies. I love everybody, I don't have a choice if I want to go to heaven, but I got to tell you the truth. He wrote, we must move as quickly as possible to a one world government. A one world religion under a one world leader. So as he began to travel the world, over 100 trips in his 25 years, the world was watching. His first trip to a conference in Mexico in 1979 instantly transformed the world's idea of the papacy. Some five million jubilant people in one crowd, it was said to be the largest ever. Among those surprised, was John Paul himself. The whole thing is tied with Bible. The church and state is going to unite in the last days and they will bring the mark of the beast that the Bible says. So notice. You came from circumference them. I did, your old country. Yes. And it was uh, successful. Successful, you have some decisions. It's not so easy in this process. The Iraq war has been another foreign policy challenge, beginning with John Paul's papacy. Other foreign policy priorities for Benedict include pushing for peace in the Holy Land and decrying rising secularism in Europe. He's also been quietly working to establish relations, something that was not possible during the last papacy, largely because of John Paul's role in the fall of communism in Poland. The Chinese obviously didn't want John Paul II running around China doing the same thing. Uh, Pope Benedict is, is not that kind of a threat to China. So. Most of the time, in places around the world, Vatican diplomats work outside the spotlight, where experts say they often have an advantage. Some question how much government leaders of today truly listen to what the Pope has to say. And that, observers say, is a moral authority that can't be measured by economic strength or military divisions. A moral authority Benedict hopes to draw upon when meeting with U.S. officials and speaking before the United Nations. I'm Kim Lawton in Washington. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is a very real prospect of a new world order. Pope Benedict XVI is calling for a new world financial order. A document entitled Charity and Truth was released just hours before the G8 summit. Friends, the Jesuit order, they also infiltrate every religion. 
especially Sunday churches. That's why Revelation chapter 17 called this power, Paul, notice, the mother of Harlot. Jesus Christ is the one who died for the whole world and he's drawn everybody to himself. But this power, they don't want you to go to Jesus Christ. They want you to go to them and confess your sin to them. So notice what Revelation chapter 18 says. And they also infiltrate the king's president. So notice. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen and is fallen. And is become the habitation of devils and the whole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of her fornications. And notice, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. This battle is the final conflict of Satan himself to eradicate the Son of God from the minds of men. Friends, now I'm going to tell you the mark. Notice this power, the mark of the beast. Because notice if the Bible says the mark of the beast means this power has a mark. The beast is a language that God is using for this power. And they themselves, they says in their own book, the book of Catechism, the old version. Notice, they say Sunday worship is their mark of authority. The new version, they don't use the word authority. But at least, thank God, they still admit it. Even the new version of Catechism, they still says they changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. Friends, the mark of the beast is not worldly speculations that sometimes you hear. Some people say, well, it's computer chip. Unfortunately, you don't find in the Bible. And some people says, you know, it's 666. But according to Revelation 13 verse 18, actually 666 help you to find the beast. What I mean is to identify the beast. But the Bible says the mark. The reason why I repeat and I kind of stretch it because I don't want you to miss it. It's a deception. Notice the mark of the beast. It's clear. It means the power, the beast has a mark. to to change the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. But unfortunately, Sunday churches, they adopt sun worship day for so many years they don't want to get rid of it but actually it's a pagan sun worship day sunday worship look even the spellings you'll find out matter of fact if you look your calendar sunday is always begin as the first day of the week unfortunately they will skip and some people they don't know they will count monday as the first day of the week because according to revelation chapter 12 verse 9 the devil will deceive the whole world so it's a deception so the devil you know he's in the process blinding the people including the christian though friends if you go to church sunday notice the first day church now you don't have the mark of the beast according to Revelation 14 and 13 unless the law it's an enforce. That's why now you hear different country they try to force the people to not sell or do anything on Sunday because they try to enforce the law. But according to Bible notice United States is the one who's going to cause the whole world to worship the beast. They are sun worship day means Sunday worship according to Revelation 13. So whenever United States enforce the law then every country also going to enforce because they control the whole world. Every president on the Roman Catholic Church. When our founders declared a new order of the ages, they were acting on an ancient hope that is meant to be fulfilled. And now because they control every president in every country, they are new world order. So now they're using the president to sign up laws and all kinds of rules like gay and lesbian. And now they don't want you to talk about Bible. You know, if you go to work, they don't want you to talk about Christ because, you know, they say it's offended. They try to put the whole world in darkness. They don't want people to know the truth just like what they did in dark ages. They remove Bible from people and they put people in darkness. 
so that they can control them. That's what they're doing again. Notice what Bible says in Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 12. And do this knowing the time that now is a high time to awake out of sleep. Now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. 